Honorable Chief Guest for today, Honorable Mr. Justice <coughs> M.R. Shah, former Judge Supreme Court of India, former visitor Gujarat National University, and former member of our General Council at Gujarat National University. My mentor, Shri Lalit Basit, Dr. Lalit Basit, advocate. Supreme Court of India, President of the Society of Indian Law Firms. <coughs> My good friend and colleague, Professor Dr. Sashi Kalakurku, <coughs> Director Sindhya of this Law School Pune, and Dean of uh, the Faculty of Law Sindhya of this National University. The co host for this program, Mr. Pakesh Kapoor, CEO of Manupatra. Ms. Priyanka, CEO of Manupatra, all the distinguished faculty colleagues who have assembled here today, all the participants, ladies and gentlemen. I deem it a great honor and privilege to stand before all of you to extend a hearty welcome to each one of you to this one of the kind initiative called the Law Teachers Conclave. This, in fact, was an idea which was always told to me by our Honorable Chief Guest, Honorable Justice Marsha, that he was concerned about the quality of legal education. Now, assuming the office of uh, the Chairman of the Legal Education Committee at Bar Council of India. Now the Honorable Chief Guest, Justice M.R. has come closer to legal education and I hope, sir, under your leadership, with your visionary leadership, <coughs> legal education in this country will definitely find a significant improvement. He was always concerned about training faculty members and he used to give a number of examples where uh, teachers could not live up to the expectations of uh, the younger generation of students and uh, that was one thing which was always there in my mind that we need to do something for the law teachers community as a law university. Then came uh, an interaction with uh, Ms. Priyanka and uh, Manubhaka facilitated by one of our former colleagues, Karpesh Kumar, uh, the founder of Law Teachers India and Pro Bono India. So when we had a conversation, we thought that uh, let's make it big. That idea was, uh, we, we used that spark to make this event a big event. And uh, in fact, uh, Ms. Priyanka wanted it to have it in Delhi. Then I specifically convinced Ms. Priyanka that uh, we can't bring all the law teachers at one point of time to Delhi. Let that be a culminating event. Let's start with the different regions. And let, uh, since the GNLU is associated since beginning, so let's start it with GNLU. And I am now very happy that we have many other partners who have, who have accepted this responsibility of hosting this uh, law teachers conclave at multiple regions like the NLU Delhi will be hosting the northern region and uh, we, are, we are finalizing the other partners in the uh, southern region, the western region as well as in the central region of India. So this is not going to be the end of uh, the program. This is only the beginning of uh, this regional conclave which we hope it will end at a national level conclave uh, culminating maybe at Delhi or some other place where we will choose to decide in the future. The topic that was chosen is something very, very important. I think now as law teachers we need to introspect. If the, the topic, if you all have this brochure, it says that the law in motion. Adopting legal pedagogy in times of rapid change. So what is clear, law is in motion, law is evolving, law is changing every day. But what happens to the legal pedagogy or the teaching methodology? 
are we changing are we evolving with the time whether is there any significant change in the way that we teach law to our students so that is the focus of this conclave that is why the theme says adopting legal pedagogy in times of rapid change so that again presupposes or we are seeing that the rapid change is taking place at multiple other sectors what's happening in the legal education sector so we need to introspect that today for example you know, preeka is uh, from the banking sector if uh, and preeka is now in uh, associated with legal education she can understand the the difference between these two sectors especially the change what has happened in these two places all uh, uh, the the uh, distinguished members on the dais uh, belong to my generation belong to my age group i hope all of them will understand what i am trying to say it was first september uh, 1989 i received my first salary check my senior gave me i was practicing at the madras high court my senior gave me a check for 300 rupees so that was my first salary 300 rupees very happy but since as a as a junior lawyer i never had the time to go to the bank to get cash and whenever i thought of going to the bank seeing the crowd there i will again come back because i did not have that kind of a time to spend but one day when i was in absolute need of money then i had to take leave from my office to go and encash the check many of you i do not know how many of you may visualize the those days of banking that you will have to go stand in a queue to submit your check and after that they give you a token then you will have to wait till your token number is called then your token number will be called and then you will go to the teller and collect the cash and come this takes a minimum 3 to 4 hours especially in a, in a small branch of state bank of india especially in the high court campus you can understand the, the pain of even withdrawing the 300 rupees now see the way the banking sector has evolved using technology how it has evolved today i do not know when i i don't remember when i last visited my bank my home branch i, I don't know i don't remember exactly the date but this date i can remember because the pain that i had to undergo to withdraw that 300 rupees is still there that date i can remember. but today i don't remember when did i went to my home branch because everything is happening on mobile phone without going to the bank and i hope all of you will agree with me that the way the banking sector has evolved over a period of time the way they have adapted to the change which is happening it's completely a different uh, thing so the concern is whether that kind of change what's happening in the other sector not only really banking take any sector aviation or anything the kind of change that is happening in other fields is it happening that day 1989 when i was in the uh, law college the same classroom and uh, today after 30 years i go there as an alumni i go there to meet my principal and the other colleagues who are there the same class no change absolutely no change what is the biggest change that we can say in terms of technology few law schools in this country have some projectors fixed like this and this we call it as using technology to teach law except for this i don't think we have done any innovation in law teaching but that's not the case when it comes to other disciplines that is why we thought that we will have an exclusive session today
to learn from the other disciplines. What's happening in the medicine, in the field of medicine? How this clinical education happens in medicine? How a student gets a hands-on experience dealing with his patients from day one of his college days? And that is why they don't need to go and work as a junior with any senior doctor. Senior doctor in the medical fraternity. Same thing. You see the kind of labs and the workshops and the kind of practical training that an engineer gets in a good engineering school. Do we? Again, there are few law schools who are doing great. Let's not consider them as the role models because they are hardly few. Out of 1800 law schools today, what we have, now let's introspect on the quality of legal education that we have been providing and whether with this approach to teach law and with this kind of legal education, whether we will be able to contribute to nation building process in improving the quality of justice delivery, in improving access to justice, whether all these things are possible. So these are few questions which we are leaving it open. In fact, we have a very eminent panel today, experts coming from multiple uh, uh, centers who are going to be with you, with all of you today to interact. And uh, I am sure that uh, at the end of the day, all of you will go home with very rich experience, uh, with wonderful learning from uh, Starbucks from this field and also with wonderful memories of being here at the JNN. With these few words, once again I extend a very hearty welcome to each one of you for this Law Teachers Conclave in the Western Region uh, 2023. Wish you all the best, enjoy your day, and uh, thank you so much, Manu Bhatra, for giving us this opportunity to host this first conference.